I was originally, when I was a youngster, going to college to be an outdoor pursuits leader, would you believe? Yeah. And I was always climbing mountains. But I was always the one who wanted to be to the top, right? And it was really interesting because when I started in the civil service, they organised some training, a bit of day like this, and we had Chris Bonington, yeah? And he talked about um, when, you, when you lead like a group up Everest, sometimes you don't get to the top. You get to the last base camp and you put everything in place. And then you get your pride because your team got to the top. And I can remember it now and it's been with me ever since. That was really inspirational for me. I didn't have to get to the top all the time. Right? I could just make sure that my team got to the top. And actually, Rivez, when I went to Canterbury, that was one of the things I was a bit better at, was ensuring, you know, it was my, my team, my middle managers. They led, and I just created the circumstances for them to do that. And so I hope that from this morning, you've got something to take away with you, right? And it's something that stays with you. Um, I'm just really sad I wasn't there. Oh, and by the way, I don't climb any mountains, but I'm still skiing, right? And I've learned the heart of a chairlift. Very good, yeah. <laughs> or, or a train if you're in Switzerland. So that was by the way. But why am I here, right? Well, I'm here, and I'm really grateful for, for you inviting me um, to talk about lifelong learning. I'm not here to talk about what government thinks is a lifelong learning entitlement. I'll come to that in a minute. I'm here to talk about true lifelong learning. So I want to tell you why it's important. I'm sure you will be with you, um, me on that. Um, what is one? Um, what we have in this country at the moment? Um, and what do other countries have that I'm really jealous about? So that's my session. I'm going to manage it in just on 20 minutes so we can buy you some time back. Um, so, so first of all, uh, many of you in this room, well, all of you in this room, are to do um, with ensuring that you as students get an award. Um, you're not, some of you are not lecturers, right? Some of you are the people that organise the exams, get the students through, tell the teachers what to do, make sure management understand all the circumstances around um, making sure that people sit an exam on time. What I'd like to do, because um, you often hear in the news, you know, Robert Alphen, um, the skills minister, will say, I'm really grateful for teachers um, in schools, right? Very rarely have I seen a politician say, I'm really grateful to all the awarding body staff in schools, colleges, and learning organisations. So, I think you deserve a clap, right? So, will you clap each other? Um, and maybe my little um, target for next year is to get a minister to say that in a speech. Maybe we should both try that, yeah? So um, why is lifelong learning important? Now, um, if you look to other countries, if you look to Germany, Sweden, Canada, Singapore, they've all got lifelong learning strategies. For some reason, England hasn't got a strategy. Now, I say England because Wales has a strategy. Um, I say England because Scotland's got a strategy. Um, I say England because Southern and Northern Ireland and the island of Ireland have got strategies, right? Sweden's got a strategy, Singapore's got a strategy, Germany's got a strategy. We haven't got a strategy. What we've got is a sort of mixed bunch of different initiatives. And why do we need one? Why do we need a lifelong learning strategy now? Now, some of you might be good at adult ed in you know, history and will know that we've been talking about lifelong learning strategies for 120 years. Yeah. Um, and at times, this country's had a great one. Post-war, building Britain was a great one. Um, but now, as we speak here, we don't have one. Now, when I was in government 13 years, we had a strategy a year, right, up to 2012. And since the coalition, since do you remember the coalition about seven prime ministers behind? Um, uh, it, it, that was the last strategy, 2012, right? I can say I was the person who, you know, helped draw up, develop, was the architect behind that strategy, and there's never been one since. I think, and I, and I you know, this is, it, is it a political comment? Maybe, but... We just, as a country, you know, in the G7, we need a lifelong learning strategy. We've never had so many 
um, issues to deal with. We got artificial intelligence. You know, how many of you have gone on chat yet? You know, using it to do your policies. Just use it. It's brilliant, right? You know, well, want a health and safety policy? Just get chat to write it, you know? Want a student discipline policy? Just get chat to write it. Of course, you've got to check it. Of course, you've got to contextualize it. But at least it helps you get the first headings on the paper. It's a fantastic tool. Um, and it's there for your teachers as well. So we got AI coming along. Then in this country, you heard Andy talk about the skill shortages. We've supposedly never had so many skill shortages. When all the sort of Romanians and Poles went back, when the French went back, they left, you know, over a million vacancies, and we don't talk about it enough. Um, we've also got you know, new technology that isn't AI. You know, we're all dealing with it, whether it's our phones or whether it's an, a new bit of kit in manufacturing. Um, we, we've got... <laughs> We all of us required to work longer. Um, you know, we actually, what's it now, we're 66 when you get your state pension. You know, that could raise in 20, 30 years time to 79, right? Some of the analysts say that, yeah? I'm looking in the audience for the young people, <laughs> just worrying not to have eye contact with them, right? Um, and I heard a really interesting stat the other, just, well, in the last year. Um, if you're 19 today, you're more likely to get 19 jobs and you are likely to work to your 79. So when we talk about lifelong learning, we're talking about learning for life. So you can't switch off. Right? So if you're, you know, if you're a seven-year-old today, if you've got seven-year-olds, please talk to them about learning. Don't make them think that it stops at 16 or 21 when they get their degree or 26 when they finish their doctorate in something. It goes on for life. And that is what lifelong learning is really about. It's all age, all levels, and all settings. And that's what I'd like you to think about, really, is that... What we got in this country. Um, so when we talk about all age, I'm talking from probably before birth, right? So young women, and um, when they on their mater, when they you know about to, and often when they're about to give birth, you actually put a hand out in front of them and says you a child must. But they need to be understanding that straight away they needed to be helping that child read. We all know early readers do well in life. So when we talk about, you know, all, all ages, it really is from being quite young. And then when we talk about all stages, right, we, uh, all levels, sorry, we're talking about, you know, those who are going to learn to get a degree, but 20 to 30% of our population have still got poor basic skills at 19. They haven't got a level two. So when this government came out four years ago with the idea of a lifelong learning entitlement, I thought, fantastic. And then it got watered down and watered down until it's a lifelong learning entitlement to a loan at 19 plus. And it's for those who did well in school. It's not for those who didn't get a level two. It's not for those who've got poor basic skills. Now it's been watered down again. It's not even those that are there for people with level three. There's no maintenance or support for them. So when I talk about lifelong learning, I talk about the whole population the 20% of this population who have not got a level two. And that is incredibly important because without them improving their skills, the productivity of this country will not improve. We keep on seeing, I don't know if you've been watching since last week, you know, the Chancellor, but we've been looking at, you know, all these graphs about productivity. And nobody on the telly, all those sort of pundits you have to listen to on Channel 4 and Sky, they actually haven't made the link to poor basic skills poor productivity. And if you look at that chart in other countries who do make that link, you know, you can see that is the problem with Britain, that our poor basic skills is holding us back. And then um, ju just on the Chancellor last week, um, people like me get really quite excited about, you know, fiscal statements. It sounds really sad, isn't it, really? I did do economics for A-level, so I'm, you know, been with me a long time. So I'm sitting there thinking, it's going to be our, our fiscal statement. There's going to be things in there. You know, they're talking about productivity. They're talking about migrants. They're talking about the people in this country, you know, uh, that need to work longer, all that running up. And what do we get? We get the Chancellor there saying 
Nine million people in this country have poor literacy and numeracy. At that moment, I thought my ship would come in. He was going to announce the sister strategy to multiply. I got really, really excited. It lasted 30 seconds because his solution was the advanced British standard for 80, 16 to 18 year olds, which is not going to come in for 10 years. Right. Nothing about the legacy that we've got in this country at this moment of time. And that's the issue that we really have, that, um, that we have initiatives, but we don't have a strategy. So, and in this country, we should be proud, but nobody ever wraps it all up as a narrative because we do have, you know, scope for our little ones now to go, go to nursery, you know, and, you know, we do have school from post five onwards, um, and we do have an entitlement for young people to stay on at school um, uh, or work with training until they're 18. And we do have some money in the system for adults to do literacy and numeracy, not enough. Um, and we do have money in the system to for level two, and we do have money in the system for level three. Um, however, um, it's not all joined up. It's not a story of progression. So you might be working really hard in your locality to make sure that you as students who are, you know, have just done an, an award at level two and are really excited about it have got somewhere else to go. However, for adults, that's really difficult at this moment. Um, I live in Surrey and... Um, and not, not, I live on the Surrey-Sussex border, I need to do this. With my Welsh accent, I don't really quite fit in Surrey, right? But I do fit on the, Welsh, on the Sussex border quite well. Um, but if you wanted to do um, GCSE English, uh, you might be offered one place on a Tuesday evening. And then you would be assessed. And if the person assessing you don't think you're going to pass, they won't put you on it. Now, that's not progression. That is not helping learners. Um, and we need to, in every locality, have that progression route. And Andy talked about LSIPs. I mean, the LSIPs, I'm not sure about a concept, but we got them. Um, but they're only level three and above. That's what the chambers were asked to do with them. Uh, and, um, you know, 70% have mentioned things like essential skills. Um, and you could say in that there might be literacy and numeracy. But I'm hoping that LSIPs 2 will actually be, if we can't have a lifelong learning plan nationally, that we can have one locally. And that's why LSIPs are quite potent at this time, because they're the only thing that we've got um, to hold, us, uh, hold on to. Now, when we're thinking about, you know, what else have we got in this country, um, we, we've got lots of projects still. We've got boot camps. I don't know what you all think about boot camps or any of you running them. I don't mind the concept, right? Um, anybody that's worked in the, you know, October Suits world, I can't believe, you know, um, will know that a boot camp is fine, right? And, um, you know, the under 30s, again, looking around the room, right? You do lots of boot camps. You might do a, a sports boot camp or a training boot camp or, or a, my son did an IT boot camp. He's done a coding boot camp. It's a sort of word that's being used. I have no problem with that. The problem I have, they level three and above. And I hope this year they'll be flexed. And that's my problem. Where do the level two people go? What's there for them? And why do government think that there's all these people ready to do a level three? Where are they, right? No, they're level two. You need to get them up to level two so that they can go on level three. And the other question is, um, why are they being run separately? You know, why weren't they just given the funding given to colleges um, or providers or local authority institutions and say, right, you were already doing engineering, can you just do a short intensive one for us? Um, and that is the problem. We don't build, we just add on, and we don't actually join when we add on. And the other one was the free level threes. Again, you know, who is waiting to go on a, you know, a high, high economic value free level three? Um, if, they, if, if our you know, young people haven't done a level three, there's normally a reason why they haven't. They will be dyslexic. They have got a learning issue. You know, they haven't got their English. They haven't got their maths. So those people need support. And the best people to give support are those who understand that client group. And again, we've got an issue that we just do not build on. So looking forward, um, <laughs> lifelong learning is not going to go away. Right. And that's why other nations, like I said at the beginning, are investing in it. So in Canada, for instance, um, you can uh, start 
um, to bring down your pension if you want. So if you're 55, say, right, and you want to retrain, you can get at your pension pot to do that. And not everybody would want to do that. Um, in New York, they've got a similar system for um, bankers because they think, in the financial district of New York, they think, well, actually, you know, AI is going to take out those middle roles. So, again, they got funds to do that. Again, in Canada, they had a big scheme about three years ago um, about lorry drivers. They were really worried about driverless lorries, and therefore they trained all these lorry drivers up in all jobs. And then, and then in, in Los Angeles, there was a crash. So they've gone back to saying, no, we'll put that on on a back burner and we need drivers in our lorries. But what I'm guessing at, training and retraining and retraining is there for life. So lifelong learning, adult education, I don't know whether you, you feel it, right, but you are in a growth industry. Right? We do need to actually understand that we have got a population that will need retraining and the historical population we got with poor literacy and numeracy will, will need to be brought up. Those who might have a level three, those who might have a level four, or even those with a, with a degree will need retraining. And that is where our lifelong learning entitlement does come in, because it will, you know, if it works properly, it will give people a chance to retrain and in a modular format. So again, you know, there's bits of that that are brilliant, but it's still an adjunction, it's still added on to the, to the system. Now, where I come to be really jealous is Singapore. Has anybody from or been to Singapore recently, right? Um, for the last five years, they've been working to the skills plan in Singapore. And it's not just skills, or other countries really do bring skills and well-being together. They totally understand the wider benefits of learning. So they are national strategies or frameworks. They normally start off with a sentence to say, you know, we will develop our, our businesses and our people through education and skills. And, you know, I've got a collection of about 24 of these, like, vision mission statements now. And they nearly all say the same thing. And in Singapore, they've given an enhancement to people, um, uh, which is not a loan, which is a fund, so that they can take, they get themselves back into this retraining mode. And that's really what I would like to, to see in, in this country. So I, I'm going to stop in a minute. I'm just watching the time, because I want you to be able to finish at sort of th three o'clock, you know, what, what time you've got. Um, the, what I'm trying to say to you, and I hope I've got the message across, right, that you're all brilliant, right? And you're working in a brilliant industry. You don't always feel it, right? But without you, right, and without organisations like the centres, we wouldn't be doing what the nation needs. And a bit of me now thinks we will do what's needed without government. Right? We, all we need them to put in place is not maybe the strategy because we can go regional or local, but what we do need them to keep in place is the money. We need them to tie it up you know, together so we don't have a pot for this and a pot for that. However, we don't need them to tell you what to do with your learner. What you need is the flexibility to get on and do what, it, what I see as a learner-led policy. And I actually see in the devolved areas a chance to do that. Yes, some of them were a bit bureaucratic at the beginning, but they are now beginning to understand. It is learners that learn. It doesn't matter what anybody says, you know, that old saying, you, can't, you can take a, war, a, dog, a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. It's the same with people. People want to learn. And you and people that you work with are those people who will actually foster in our population, in our residents, that need for lifelong learning. And just to, an add-on, don't forget, you need to learn as well. You need to retrain. You need to keep yourselves up to speed. And that's why I started with AI and I'll finish with AI. It's a friend. It can work really well for you. So thank you.